Hello and a very warm welcome. We're broadcasting from a freezing Davos in Switzerland. This is right outside the World Economic Forum Congress. And joining us for a discussion on the India story are four very special guests. I want to introduce, starting from my immediate left, uh, Tulsi Tanti, Chairman and Man Managing Director of Suzlon Energy Limited, one of the biggest players in the Indian renewable energy space. With us also flanking him, Ramesh Ayer. He's the Managing Director of Mahindra and Mahindra Financial Services. To the right, a very smart gentleman, one of the crispest pagadis you're going to see, Manfred Singh Badal, Finance Minister of Punjab. Uh, flanking him, finally, Ajay Veer Jakar, Chairman of the Bharat Krishak Samaj. It's a farmer's forum in India and farm distress likely to be one of the running issues of the 2019 campaign. It's minus 17 degrees here in Davos, Mr. Thulsi. Uh, some renewable energy to keep us all hot would be very useful. Welcome. Thank you so much for giving us time. Tell me, what according to you is the key focus as we build up to the budget, the last and final financial document coming from the Modi Sarkar. What are the things that a corporate honcho like you would like to see the Modi Sarkar do? I think uh, it's a very clear in a global economy environment, India is extremely, uh, our economy is well positioned. Uh, we have uh, lots of things in our plate. If we can grab faster, I think it's a great uh, uh, thing is there. So if I see the narrow down on a three area, A is a very high focus on our agriculture uh, sector and value added product and exports. Number two is uh, the manufacturing, which is Mac in India is the dream of our prime minister and to create a jobs and export. And the third is coming out to leverage the renewable energy competency and capability and technology expertise what we have to make India as a global manufacturing hub and to export all over the world, particularly for the wind turbine technology. And fourth, where it is our core competency of our country, we should focus on, on, on our services like uh, IT and digital technology and area. It's a great opportunity to create a domestic jobs, not only that, to make a global sustainable on a digital technology. I think these are the focus area is extremely economy, economically uh, a solution provider for our Indian economy. Okay. Mr. Badal, the Indian government would obviously want to send a message here in Davos to the whole world that India is an economy on the move. The last four and a half years have been transformative years for the Indian economy, lethargy built over 70 years, unshackled, and the Indian tiger is now outpacing the Chinese dragon. Do you believe all of that to be true, or do you believe there are big holes in the India shining story? Well, Rahul, uh, first of all, I must say that these are very exciting times to be an Indian and very exciting times to be a politician. You know, you could have been an Indian from 1950 uh -huh. to 1990. You know, GDP growth was 3.5%, but population was growing at 2.5%. So effectively, India was growing for 40 years at only 1%. So when you say 4.5 years, I would actually put it at 25 years, that when our economy, GDP has started clocking 8%, 9%, 7%, growth has dropped from 3.5 to 2.5. People like me have started dreaming dreams which my grandfather's generation could ne not have dreamt of, which my father's generation could not. So the message, as you said, is that, and what people like me feel, that within our lifetime, India must become a superpower. If we continue to grow at this, this, this pace, for what we have done in the last 25 years, then I think uh, after thousands and thousands of years, you know, India would take its place in as you know a rightful place in the community of nations so we are very excited about this and this is what we have come from i've come from punjab of course uh, and this is the first real serious public relation exercise by punjab uh, trying to showcase itself because well navjot singh sidhu will say his was the first real no, no, pr no, no, exercise no, 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 no. PR in exercise, kartarpur no, 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 and in pakistan PR exercise for punjab sure. in we were busy growing food grains because we were told that food security is as important as national security you know if you have a population of 1.25 billion people god forbid if there's a harvest failure even if you had money in your pocket you would not be able to buy food grains in the international market for to feed a billion people but having said that, I think Punjab, we are seriously mounting a public relation exercise to diversify our economy, diversify the way we uh, conduct ourselves in government, so on and so forth. So after almost 71 years, 
uh, I mean, they were started, I'm sure, much later. But uh, Punjab is actually trying to get itself an industrial base, a service tax industry base, and so on and so forth. Ajay Virjakar, there's been a lot of talk about farmer distress in the build-up to the general elections of 2019. How much of a factor will supposed agrarian distress be? Because the Modi Sarkar contests this very strongly, saying that this is just the figment of imagination of opposition leaders and activists. And on the ground, the lives of farmers are being transformed by their various schemes, the urea scheme being just one of them. I think what needs to be understood is, for the policymakers and for the business houses, is that the development that has taken place in the last few decades or that is being visualized for globalization is transferring costs to the next generation. The whole idea of being here at the World Economic Forum is to change the narrative to say that you cannot develop by transferring costs to the next generation. And that's one of the reasons that farmers in India are suffering because we are transferring costs of containing inflation to the farming community. And, and that's the crux of the situation. Till we do not realize this fact, that we do not change the narrative that we need to develop in context to the environment and to the ecology ecology that exists, we will we will continue to suffer. Okay, Mr. Ayer, uh, tell us what, according to you, are the key expectations from the last Warden account? Are you still hoping that the government will be able to push through some economic measures, or is India Inc. giving up for all practical purposes, thinking this is likely to only be a populist budget with an eye on re-election and nothing else? I think we do a lot of work in rural India. Rural India works on two cash flows. One is the farm cash flow, other is the infra cash flow. I think whatever that can be done, even now, I think what one should try and do is to kind of open up as many projects as one can that will absorb a lot of people as far as employment locally is concerned. The assets will get deployed pretty well. And I think that will drive the sentiments even for the future. How much of an impact have schemes of the Modi government, like, for example, the Mudra Yojana, small loans, small medium enterprises, had on the ground? Because you've got opposition saying that the ticket amounts are too small, uh, the majority of the loans are for very negligible amounts, and that's not enough to fuel anything more than pakoranomics. I think, uh, yes, the ticket size is small. But I think that's a beginning. I think if that experience is good, one should see how do you take it to the next level. I think that's extremely, extremely important. I think as far as uh, we are concerned, one has to look at how do you keep the sentiments going positive. I mean, you must look at the SME segment. You know, what are they suffering from? The working capital requirement. I think the banking needs to be guided that the SME can be supported well. Then and then only the manufacturing is going to really pick up big time. So I think it's not just any one thing. One has to kind of start looking at what are the gaps and how many more can be done because it's extremely important that the cash flows have to hold up if the sentiments have to hold up. Okay, Mr. Tanti, renewable sector has been one of the biggest thrust areas of the Modi government. How much of a facilitator have these policies been? Is there more that you would have liked to see to help the Indian uh, renewable energy sector grow even faster than it is? So the, the target of... <coughs> The renewable energy, the target is uh, very ambitious, 175 gigawatt. And uh, if you can really understand the last three to four years, no new capacity on a fiscal, uh, sorry, in, in a power sector areas, the conventional power capacity is coming. So currently, India is building the energy need is based on renewables. Out of 175 gigawatt till now, the 75 gigawatt in last four years is the highest growth has happened. Because the earlier the system was based on state and now it is driven by the central government. So it has changed a lot. It took time two years to transform the whole industries to move in that direction. But when I see the down the line next five years, I think foundation is completed. Roadmap is very clear is there. Cost of energy has come down because of the scale and everything. Just imagine two rupees 75 paisa is the cost of energy coming from renewable, which is the lowest cost uh, compared to all energy form area. If I focus on the how to escal escal escalate, uh, sorry, how to accelerate the growth, it's extremely important on a three-part area is there. The current bidding process required to relook on that because the wind energy is 100% domestic manufacturing and India is exporting in other part of the world. So if you really want to expand the more manufacturing capacity, make India as a global manufacturing hub for the world market to be able to expand our market size very faster. So the bidding process is the two things is a barrier is there or constraint is there. So number one is the each bidding process, there is a price gap. 
which is a creating a, a lot of constraints because of the financing and other things are become difficult because of the low pricing and everything. And the second is the reverse bidding uh, process area. If you really address those uh, two things, it will unlock the size of the, the demand and market to satisfy the domestic need also. Okay. Nikhil Prasad Oja, as a partner at Bin Company, tell us what's the mood amongst all your clients? Are they still looking seriously at the Invest in India story or are they mostly in a wait and watch mode wanting to see what happens in May 2019. Thanks, Rahul. Uh, the answer is that uh, they are actually very bullish about India and for very good reasons. The fact of the matter is elections do matter, of course, but not as much as some of the headlines may suggest. And that's because India has been and will remain a consumption-powered story for a number of years to come. If you were to rewind 12 years ago, we had an income distribution in India that was like the Eiffel Tower, a very broad base, low income, num large number of low-income consumers, and a very thin, narrow top, right? If you look at it today, it's become the classic pyramid. Yes, there has been growth in the middle class, but not a whole lot. It's still a pyramid. And in the next 12 years, some Bain and Company research that we've done and which we're going to show here at World Economic Forum is going to show that we are finally going to have a diamond-shaped economy. You're going to have 14 crore more households that are going to be in the uh, middle-income group, and you'll have 20, uh, uh, 20 million more households which are going to be in the high-income group. That's really what's going to power the economic story, and that's why our clients are very bullish on in India.